Hey guys, Caleb here, once again, coming at you with another video. And today, I'm going to teach you how to speedrun Boomer Kawanger stage as part of part three of the speedrun tutorial. So after you get done with Cho Penguin stage, you're obviously going to be right here. So how you want to select go to Kawanger is you want to hit down, right, and then down. And then you can do that quickly, like that right there. Uh, a lot of the times what you can do though is, and I've done this, I've done this more times than I can count, but it's wherever you, wherever you make the input and you don't actually hit the down button and you end up going to Mammoth instead. Or you'll do one of these. So make sure to not like go, I mean you want to go super fast but you also want to make sure to just not select the wrong stage. So just like that and then boom like that. Pretty quick. So then, here we go, with Kawanger Stage. Kawanger Stage, in my opinion, is possibly the most technical stage in the game due to all the ladder jumps and all the gap jumps and shit like that. So it's a lot of fun to actually, like, just execute properly. Uh, so, starting off, just jump to the ladder. Now from here, there's a few different things that I'm, I'm going to show you how to do. Uh, one of the things right here is called right wall. This saves about a half a second over any other optimal strat. I don't recommend this. I don't do this. Even top runners, they just say hell with it. They don't. They don't really mess with it. Uh, it's really crazy to do. Um, as you can see here, it's just like this is what the TAS does. Tool assist speed run. Pretty much what a computer does. Uh, it's really difficult to do, and like that right there. If you want to practice that and incorporate that into your speed run, you can, if you want. I don't recommend it, but that's up to you. You can do whatever you want to do. But instead, what we're going to do is we're going to do a full dash, and then, now see the... This right here, this is called a gap jump, where you can actually skip the climbing animation versus uh, actually climbing like that, and it does save some time. So let's do that again. And sometimes you don't, sometimes you don't get it. Um, it's just very precise. Uh, this will take some practice. You don't have to do that. You know, you can obviously just like climb the ladder like that. And then what you want to do is you got a couple things you can do based on what is comfortable. I believe this is ever so slightly faster going off the left wall like this. Um, or you can just dash right over here and then climb the ladder like that. This ladder right here, you know, you, you can't really gap jump it, nor do you want to because it's not really going to save you any time. So let's start from the bottom. You can do this gap jump here. Uh, with gap jumping though, whenever you do that, you have to be very fast or it's not going to save you any time at all. Um, so it's definitely going to make you, you're definitely going to have to practice that if you want to commit to the gap jump. So once you get up here, you can either go here, just uh, bounce over there, or you can do this. And this little guy is not going to be swinging his ball and chain whenever you do this normally. So. Okay. So once you get up to there, this is kind of the tricky part. This is probably the hardest part of the entire stage, actually. The, I'd say I'd say the point of the run that I reset the most on, actually, because it's really difficult to optimize. So what you want to do is you want to bounce off this wall, and then you want to wall kick onto this platform. Now you can choose to kill this guy with ice if you want to just ensure you're not going to bonk into him. But I don't because you know, I'm going to do something quick like that. Except that's not entirely optimal. This is what's going to be optimal right there. That's 
something you will see in like a in like a top level run. Like that right there. You see how clean and like smooth that movement was? This is where the movement really shines with Mega Man X speedruns. Like that right there. Notice how I was on the platforms as for as little time as possible? That's what you want. So this right here and you know this is gonna take some practice you wanna probably go slow you know if you wanna do something like this you can um... <laughs> I'm not when we kill that guy and then do it that way you know um... we can actually test how much time that will that loses over doing it optimally so let's try it optimally so that's 4.36 versus So as you can see there, it doesn't look like much, but whenever it comes down to speedrunning in this game at top level, that half a second or whatever margin that was, that matters in the end. That's going to separate you from the top level player. So you can do that. Um, so that's what I would suggest. And like I said, you don't have to kill this guy. You really don't. In fact, I don't recommend you do it. But what I do recommend whenever you're learning how to do this, take it slow. Do these wall kicks. So you can do that. You can you you click off this little platform right here, and then you're gonna wall kick off of these. And interesting fact about wall kicks is that each one actually costs about 15 frames, which is the equivalent of about 14 seconds. So that's what you want to be wary of whenever you're doing wall kicks in this speed run. So, once you get to the top here, uh, this is very linear, and you're going to do this pretty much only one way. Um, so you're going to just like dash off of these. It, it kind of autopilots itself the way you do it. Um, you know, it's just it's just a series of dashes and wall kicks and stuff. There's pretty much only one way to do that. Um, however, there is something called a laser boost. And if you get damaged by this guy right here... Notice how I went to the, the top of the platform immediately after I got damaged? So let's try it again here. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you can get it, sometimes you can't. It's just, I haven't quite figured out how to make it, like, super consistent. I think you have to be more to the top of the actual platform. Yeah, I think you have to do that. But, you know, that will save you a tiny bit of time. And even still, you know, I, I, I still didn't get it. So once you get, once, you're, a lot of the times you're actually going to get damage from this thing. Uh, you're actually going to take quite a bit of intentional damage in this speedrun run. Whenever you, whenever you, whenever you do this stage, you're actually going to take intentional damage, uh, quite a bit of it. But you're not. I wouldn't worry about it because um, that's all you're going to do. And and then the rest of the damage is actually very easy to avoid. So don't fret. So once you come here, uh, this little ledge that I'm kicking off of right here, you're actually going to jump off at the very ledge. So, for example, whenever I do this, you ca notice how I waited a little bit there? Because if you, if you go too quickly, here's what's going to happen. Well, if you, do the, if, you, if you do the boost anyway. And sometimes if you go too quickly, what, it, what, is it, what ends up happening is the, the laser actually shoots at you from here. And he can, he can actually get you. So you kind of want to wait a tiny little bit just to be sure he's not going to do that. Because you notice how he shot. Once you're past the shot, like he won't he won't touch you. You're obviously past the, the point of the lasers. So you're going to be fine that way. So so once you're done with that, you want to grab the you want to grab the ladder immediately. Because what we're going to do now is something called turtle skip, and this requires like some movement. Um, if you can't do it, it's not a big deal. So, 
This is where I'm talking about. That you're gonna take you're gonna take damage there. Let's call turtle skip. Notice how I completely bypassed and actually used the the parachute to actually damage boost past and use iframes to get past like you you, you, know, you see how I did that. Now, if your movement is like not super great, what ends up what, what ends up happening is this. You know, you're gonna get damaged by the parachute or whatever he's shooting at you, and you're gonna bonk down. So, this does require some practice. Um, your movement doesn't have to be like insanely good to do this, but it is gonna require some practice. So, um, this is just something I would work on. Now, if you can't do this, you can you can always wait. You can always wait like that. But let's test to see how much time that loses. And I'm doing this not to discourage people from doing like the slower strats, but I'm showing you how much time this loses versus doing an optimal. So you can get you can get a, a pretty good a pretty good vantage point of how important the the faster strats are whenever you end up you know getting to that level so let's go ahead and do that get to the top of the ladder with 859 versus waiting So that's about almost two and a half seconds slower. And that two and a half seconds is huge whenever it comes to top level, once again. So if you combine that movement that I showed you earlier, that's about a little over three seconds that you save as a top level runner versus a beginner. And that's pretty big. So once you get done with that, uh, this is the elevator right here. Now, runners, they're gonna, they, they see me do this a lot, and I get, <laughs> I get, I get a lot of questions like, how the hell are you doing this, you know, are you not taking damage from the elevator? This isn't necessary, this is actually a habit that I developed over the years, but it's, this is a quick and easy way to just ensure that you won't get hit, because you're gonna use the iframes, all you have to do, and it's, it's all you, uh, just whenever you get up to the spike wall, jump and then try to jump off of it. And that happens. That's all you do. You don't run into it like that. But you know, do that. That will that will damage you. It's just a funny glitch with the spikes. I don't know why it's there. But what I would recommend that you do, kinda get kinda inch up to it and then now he's gonna take a damage back and then do it once more, and then this will you know, you can keep doing it. I typically do. Because it's just a habit. But that will ensure that you won't get... You won't take any damage at all. So, that's like super easy. Um, so this is the top of the elevator. Now, this is probably the most technical part of the entire stage, I'd, I would say. Anyway, this is the, the outside where you actually do the climbs and stuff. This is the fun stuff. Okay. So, you have another gap jump that you can choose to do here. This one's kind of tricky, um, but like I said, if you're not if you're not comfortable with doing gap jumps, you do not have to do them at all. No one's saying that you have to do the gap jumps, but if you're interested in doing them, you can always do them and save some time. So this is just really simple. Uh, you know your movement's good. You you want to you uh, jump off this wall before this guy actually comes out. So get to the top there. I'm gonna make a save state once you get to here. And what I like to do is equip the ice. Um, it just makes life a lot easier. Equip the ice. Now there's a couple things you can do there. Now that right there, uh, this is a little bit faster, but it does require really good movement to do that.
That's something that I would not recommend doing. Uh, this is actually pretty tough to do like that. The reason for that is because the walls in this game are kind of weird whenever it comes to actually being able to dash off things. Um, it's just kind of odd. You can try it yourself and you'll be like, you know, what the hell? So, a very simple strat is just kind of wait and then jump off of it that way. Wait for that thing to come out and then just do it this way. So that's what I would recommend whenever you're starting off. Unless, you know, you do want to do this a little, a little quicker strat. So, this right here is called a double kick. And this, this, this level actually teaches you a lot of fundamentals. You know, double kicks, gap jumps, other stuff like that, good movement. So here's what you're going to do. You're actually going to double kick off of this wall. And what that's going to achieve is a little bit quicker movement versus doing this. Because you're... Pretty much two kicks is a little bit too much unnecessary movement. So doing a, doing a double kick here, which is, which is performed with just hitting kick twice on a wall and you notice he'll he'll do a double kick and that's what that's gonna do is that's going to move X just perfectly so he's not overshooting the ledge or moving too much so you don't waste any time so you're gonna charge up a blue shot here and there's a couple different ways you can do this you can do it immediately like that that's a bit harder or you can just wait a little bit like that and you can do that so, that's a little fundamental there. So, like that. Pretty easy. Uh, switch to ice here. And then you're going to do another double kick. Double kick off of here. Like this. Shoot him with the ice. Another gap jump you can do there. Um, you know, just kind of up to you. So, like that. And then, you know, just get up there or climb the ladder, you know. So then we get to here. This is the final part of the stage. Um, what you're going to do is just dash, and then you should only have two wall kicks that you have to do here. Okay, so whenever you come up here, this is where, this is where the fun begins. Well, the, to me, I think this is the most fun part of the stage. So, here's what we're going to do. You're going to dash, and then, you know, sometimes you kill this thing, sometimes you won't. So it's kind of similar to the start of the stage, and then that's it. But, I'm going to show you how to do it. And that can happen too. Uh, you can actually get a drop from that guy that you kill, and that is annoying. It's kind of something that you just kind of have to hold um, you know so this again kill this guy and then you're gonna jump off of this and then the cycles are gonna be off because I'm doing it a little bit slower so it's just a series of wall kicks it's very difficult to show uh, doing it slowly because of the cycles of the platforms you're actually gonna use the cycles like to your advantage you're going to use them as walls because if I do this slowly it, you know, stuff like kind of gets thrown off. You know what I mean? So, and, and this does this doesn't require crazy movement to be able to do or anything. You know what I mean? So, um, just do it like this. And th and this this is a tiny little optimization you can choose to do. You can kill this turret. Now, what the killing this turret's gonna do is make this section right here a lot less laggy. And I'll and I'll actually show you. Notice how much laggier that section is if you have that guy alive versus not having him alive. And that saves a little time. So when you kick off of this, and, and if you don't kill him, it's not a big deal. 
I just climb up the wall like that. Now, once you're, once you're at the top of the ladder here, you want to start charging a shot. Because you actually want, you want to go into the, you want to go into the room with a blue shot. Okay, so, go into the room, yellow shot. Just like this. There's a funny way to manipulate Kawinger. Um, you want to go right on him, and then... The thing is, the way Kawinger works is that whenever you get close enough to him, he tries to actually grab a hold of you and throw you up. So, it's just a funny way. You can actually manipulate him. Um, versus, you know, not doing it. You know, you're just kind of just kind of prancing around. You know, you're just not really cool. So, this is a lot easier than it looks. You actually have a pretty large window to actually avoid this. And you don't have to jump back necessarily. You can just like you can just do a neutral jump like this. You know, if that makes it easier for you. This guys, this really isn't hard. Like I've had a I've had quite a few people actually tell me if like I, I can't get that trick down and you know. I'm not really sure <laughs> what it is about it that makes it so difficult for them. But it's not very difficult. So you can just do this, you know. And based on based on the luck that he gives you, will pretty much begin his teleport cycle. You don't want him to teleport at all, because that does waste time. So once again, go right up on him as quickly as you can. And then you just you just get him in an infinite combo like this until he decides to teleport anyway like this. This is average. You know he'll start teleporting and uh, different teleport cycles can actually cause him to lose time. And then the very last shot, guys, what you want to do is you want to charge that blue shot and then because he'll 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 always have three HP left. Granted that you do that strat. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys. Um, Coinger seems like a pretty difficult boss fight, so, uh, you know, just a little bit of practice, and you should be good to go. Now, let's go ahead and run the stage. So, like that. Notice how I waited a little bit, so that guy wouldn't actually shoot me. That's the purpose of waiting there. And then again, let's do this thing right here. Like this, and then you this will ensure that you won't take any damage, because you're using the iframes, right? So, you're just constantly damaging yourself. Like that. Now for the climb favorite part. See, I didn't get the gap jump there, and that's not a big deal. See, I went for that strat. The double kick, and then that can happen sometimes. You just miss the blue shot. Uh, just a timing issue, you know. About a second and a half lost. But it does matter at top level. Remember that. Just a mistake there. See, it's good to show you that, you know, even with mistakes, you know, you can still do this efficiently. Now, I'm not going to sit here and do the level absolutely flawlessly, because that's, that's not practical. I don't expect you to do that. So again, do this.
It's kind of manipulating. This is what I'm talking about with different s teleport cycles. Like, you notice how he can kind of take a little bit longer. And then like that. So, I'm sure that can be done in 151 or 150 even if I really, really tried hard at it. But, you know. If you guys want to try to beat that time, go ahead. And if you can, then that's amazing. So, anyway. That is how to speedrun Boomer Kowanger stage any percent for Mega Man X. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today. And, like I said in my previous videos, practice up. And, you know, just do your best. Thanks for watching the video. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you like the content, don't forget to follow me on Twitter and my Twitch. And more importantly, don't forget to sub to the YouTube channel. Thank you.